a question that defines life itself and that absolutely nobody <clears throat> everybody has been asking lately is what is the most powerful you can get in Elden Ring's starting area? Limgrave is the starting region in Elden Ring. It is beautiful, it's the region that still gives you the illusion that everything will be okay. It's the region where I met your mother, had a beautiful family and we lived long and happily ever after. Let's say that Elden Ring came out with only this region in the game and every other region would have never existed. What would have then happened? Well, we would be done quickly with the game, it would be a bit of a bummer really and it probably wouldn't have won game of the year. But the question arises, what would then be the absolute most powerful that we would be able to get with just stuff that we can pick up in Limgrave? To answer the question, we first need to determine the best weapon that you can actually pick up in Limgrave. In Limgrave, there are around 25 different weapons to pick up, these 25. Do you notice some familiar ones? Good. I hope you're not emotionally attached to some of these, because most of them will be eliminated. Immediately, we can eliminate the Erdtree Great Bow and the Golem Great Bow. There is no feast way to get great arrows in Limbrave and make a bow only build. Bows without having arrows is like eating ice cream without ice cream. And furthermore we can eliminate some more options with clunky movesets and just weapons that nobody really likes, even if you don't want to admit it. The flails, the forked hatchet, Honestly, there are actually quite a bunch of great weapons in Limgrave. And really, which weapon you consider the best is kinda subjective, I'm not gonna lie. But an important consideration to make is how much upgrades can you give to your weapons by only remaining in Limgrave. Well, if you look at the map, then you'll see that you can get a weapon that uses normal smithing stones to plus 5 by staying in Limgrave and a weapon that uses somber smithing stones to plus 2. If you would then put the two at the same scale, because normal weapons can be upgraded to plus 25, while unique weapons can be upgraded to plus 10, then you'll see that ultimately it is just the same upgrade level that you can achieve with both types of weapons. So there is no real advantage to be found there. <clears throat> what about a Arden, which is basically just a number to represent how hard you hit with each swing of the weapon that you're using. If you compare all the ARs of weapons in Limgrave, then yeah, you don't get a lot of insight either because completely different weapon types and such. The slower, bigger weapons are on top, while the smaller and faster weapons like daggers are all the way at the bottom. This doesn't say much really because I would argue that the Reduvia is in the top 3 of strongest weapons in Limgrave even though it has one of the lowest AR. It has this insane Ash of War that makes quick work of anything in a way that also makes you feel invincible and it comes with bleed, yay, everybody's favorite status effect. Bleeding out people is Miyazaki's favorite hobby, that's why bleed is so OP in Elden Ring. So any weapon with bleed on it is going to get a little bonus for me personally to be picked for this Limgrave only build. After trying out all Limgrave weapons and really mastering these weapons to the point that I fantasize about them in my sleep, I have come to the following conclusions. Oh, you guys. <laughs> Honorable mentions go to the Golden Halberd and the Great AP. These are great weapons that pack a punch and have this nice poke to them, making killing things easier than ever. Ever. But they don't make the top 3. See, we need something extra for the weapon to make it into the top 3. We need finesse. We need that magical touch that even if you never played a video game before, let alone a Souls game, you can absolutely wreck with this weapon. This brings me to number 3 of my top 3 Limgrave weapons, which is the good old Uchi Katana. The Uchi Katana comes with bleed and is a katana. Done. Video finished. Do I need to say more? Yes, actually I do, because the Uchi Katana comes with a powerful Unsheet Ashivor, which is a katana specific Ashivor. This Ashivor poise breaks enemies fast and destroys anything, really. But it misses something that the number 2 on the list has, the earlier mentioned Reduvia. The ability to just melt things from a distance without really having to worry about anything is just god tier. You know what is god tier as well, you pressing that like button and the subscribe button right right now. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers, hit those buttons and yeah, we'll have a big party soon. And you'll be invited as well. However, you can't just always use your Azure 4, you're going to run out of FP at some points and Limgrave does not give you a lot of golden seeds. Both the Reduvia and the Uchiketana lack something that the number one on the list has, the Bloodhound Fang. A better question to ask yourself when evaluating the Bloodhound Fang is what does this weapon not have? The answer is nothing. It has everything there is you wanted to have, making it the best weapon that you can get in Limgrave, at least from everything I've gathered. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. Bloodhound Fang has an amazing moveset that makes it swing like a dexterity weapon, but it hits like a strength weapon and it has good poise damage. It is the ultimate weapon. But even better is that it has this amazing Azure War 
power consisting out of a two hit hard hitting combo that grants you the ability to dodge whatever the enemy is trying to do with you while you're destroying the enemy at the same time. That on itself boggles the mind and raises the question who gave this weapon clearance to be in Elden Ring's starting area. I need someone to investigate what substances that man or woman was on the day that decision was made. Oh, speaking about decisions that make you raise not just one of your eyebrows, no, both of them, the weapon has built-in bleed, the most OP status effect in the game. Then it's also buffable and there is in fact good stuff in Limgrave to buff it with, such as the blood grease and for some reason if you thought it couldn't get better it has this weird unique plus 10% damage to jump attacks that other curved greatswords do not have. So in literally every aspect of what a weapon can physically possibly do in this game it is insane. I wasn't lying when I said that it has everything. Now, the Dragon Communion Seal is also in the starting area, and not just in the starting area, but in the literal starting cave or whatever it is itself, beyond the fog gate. The Dragon Communion Seal is a perfect pickup for her offhand, because most of the incantations in Limgrave have a arcane requirement, and we can cast incantations with it. Unfortunately, there are no memory stones in Limgrave, so we can only use two incantations at all time, and even more unfortunate is that there are only four incantations to pick up in the first place in Limgrave. Well, actually only two, because you need dragon hearts for three out of those four incantations to get at the Dragon Communion Church. To get a dragon heart, there's a dragon in Limgrave actually though, how convenient, it's this kill it and we can now buy one of these three incantations. It is shopping time. They are all good but I like Dragon Maw the most. The other incantation that we can get in Limgrave is by killing Pegasus himself. This guy is the true final boss in the game. Buy some Vaseline for this fight as you will definitely need it and eventually when you defeat this guy you'll get the aspects of the Crucible Tail Incantation. And now both your memory slots are filled with the most random incantations ever that do not fit with each other thematically whatsoever. But it actually works, somehow. They combine very well even. You can use the Dragon Maw into the Crucible incantation and you'll be able to stance break any enemy instantly. Then Dragon Maw adds to that that it also does massive damage for essentially free. What is there not to like about this combination? Oh, what about that badass set that I'm wearing? Is, is what you're asking? We can get that set that you just saw by killing the edgy cell swords that roam around in Limbrave. Boom, just like that. And we now look so much cooler than a few minutes ago. How is it possible? Oh, we can also pick up some talismans. We get one extra talisman pouch from killing Margit in Limgrave, meaning Limgrave grants us a total of two talisman slots. Claw talisman and green turtle talisman are really good options for this build and they are both in Limgrave. How convenient. Claw talisman buffs are already for some reason buffed jump attacks even more. And then the green turtle talisman is actually a very viable talisman in itself that fits many endgame builds even, helping us recover our stamina. Having no stamina in this game is like using an umbrella made out of fishnet to cover yourself from the rain. Everybody knows it will not work out well and we want to prevent that as much as possible. This little seemingly cute turtle helps us out very well with that and with it on our side we can conquer everything out there in the scary world. <coughs> For the Flask of Wondrous Physic, we have the luxury choice of three whole different crystal tiers in Limgrave. I personally would pick these two. One of them restores our HP, which is definitely something considering we don't get a lot of golden seeds or sacred tiers in Limgrave only, and the other crystal tier will make our charged attacks hit harder. The Bloodhound Fang has nice charged attacks, so I'll definitely take it. And now the build is complete, we have everything covered, we have a very legitimate build right here. We had to say goodbye to a lot of weapons. And it was a massive journey, but we have made it. Somehow this seemingly random mix of items and weapons that we have gotten by confining ourselves to Elden Ring's starting area actually just slaps completely whatever you're facing. And it's also fun. And the best thing is I would definitely consider this a completely viable build in every aspect of a build that you can take into the rest of the world and the late game. With this build you actually feel so powerful, which is crazy considering it was made just in Elden Ring's starting area. And that's what I personally like so much about Elden Ring, it just seems that anything is possible in this game. It truly is a RPG in that sense, because you can become whatever you want to become. Also, Limgrave is a great region, Limgrave more like Windgrave. And with this my friends, we have answered the question, what is the most powerful you can get in Limgrave and Limgrave only?